Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. And people I thank have inspired me. Hope they can inspire you as well. We'll have links below this video to their sites. They are Rabbi Shalom Arash, Rabbi Lazar Brody, Rabbi Yosef Mizrahi, Rabbi Eli Mansur, Rabbi Lon Anava, Rabbi Yuval Ovadia, Rabbi Daniel Astor, Nisan Baruch Black, David Sachs, Rabbi Mike Skobet, go back to for Judaism, Rabbi David Ashir, Rabbi Ron Ruvain, and Rabbi Yosef Chesney. As well, if you never checked out the channel before, I will have a link below to my first video, which explains what MLM for the soul means, what it stands for, and what I'm doing. So this week is taken from the weekly uh, Parsha Insights from Rabbi Eli Mansour, and this is on Parsha Pinchas. And I call this potential, potential for good. So Parsha Pinchas is almost always the first Parsha of the Bain Hamasarim which is the three weeks between the fast of Shiva Asar and Tisha B'Av. Of course, we don't believe that there are coincidences, and therefore, there must be a reason why this parasha is read during this time period year after year. We might suggest that despite the focus on the tragedies of the Jewish people, we are always aware that there will one day be redemption. This redemption will occur in two stages. First, through the coming of Elio Hanavi, and concluding with Mashiach ben David. Pinchas, as the Talmud teaches, is compared to Eliyahu. As these three weeks begin, we are reminded of and encouraged by an awareness of the final redemption to be ushered in by Eliyahu, who is compared to Pinchas by the rabbis. Some say he is. Pinchas and Eliyahu are the same person. So, uh, Furthermore, the Talmud teaches that one is not permitted to destroy a Beit HaKeset unless another synagogue has already been built. Therefore, we must believe that if Hashem destroyed the holy Beit HaMikdash, there must be another temple waiting to appear. Indeed, we say in our Yom Tov prayer, and you shall show it to us built, and we shall rejoice in it being fixed. Parashat Pinchas reminds us to think of the Geula, the promised redemption, even at the beginning of these three weeks. On a deeper level, the after Rav in his Ohev Yisrael notes that Parashat Pinchas contains all of Jewish, all of the Jewish holidays, including in order Shabbat, Rosh Chodesh, Pesach, Shavuos, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, and Shemini Atzeret. Altogether, there are 21 festive days. He writes, These 21 days between Shiva, Asar, Batamas, and Tisha B'av correspond to the 21 holidays between, um, sorry, to the 21 holidays mentioned in the parasha. Apparently, he means to say that there are 21 days upon which we mourn the absence of the Beit Hamedras, with one day uh, being celebrated with the festive sacrifices, which will one day, excuse me, which will one day, uh, there are some typos here, will one day be celebrated with the festive sacrifices mentioned in our parasha. However, there seems to be a small yet significant problem with this interpretation. If we include Tisha B'av, there are actually 22 days during the Bein HaMatsar. So Rav Tzadok HaKohen in his Peri Tzadik in Parshat Matot explains that these three weeks are unique since Hashem himself is also in exile and he is closer to us. It is therefore time conducive to spiritual growth. He further explains that the 22 days of the Bein HaMatsar, which including Tisha B'av, corresponds to the 22 letters of the Aleph days. These 22 letters are the letters with which the Torah is written, and they are therefore the 22 letters of the Torah. If so, we might suggest that the temple was destroyed because the Jewish people rebelled against the Aleph Bet, meaning against the Torah, which was written with 22 letters. As these 22 days correspond to the 22 letters of the Torah, one on each day is a day we atone for the sins of our forefathers. The keynotes said on Tisha B'Av are alphabetized in order to emphasize this very point. Um, I would like to take this one step further. Again, this is not me, this is Rabbi Ben-Sir saying this. The Talmud teaches that on the 17th of Thomas, Rabbi Moshe Rabbeinu came down from Harsinai, saw the Jewish people worshipping the golden calf, and threw down the, the tablets, the Luchot. The ra rabbis teach us that once the letters of the Torah lost their value, the tablets became, quote, dead weight which Moshe Rabbeinu could no longer hold, and he therefore threw them to the ground. The Talmud teaches that all the letters of the Aleph Beis appeared on the first tablet except for the letter Tet, which does appear on the second set of tablets, or Tes. Some people say Tes or Tet. What happened to these letters? The Ramah Mipano explains that these 21 letters contain the entire written and oral law. However, when Moshe Rabbeinu threw down the... Um, tablets, the letters of the tablets disappeared around the world. Dispersed, excuse me, not disappeared. I'm... In other words, the letters of the Torah are spread in potential around the world waiting to be actualized and redeemed. Interestingly, there is one letter which was not thrown to the ground, the letter Tet, 
which represents the word tov, good. The word tov is sometimes used to describe the Torah, ki lekach tov natati lachem. Had the letter tet representing Torah been cast to the ground, the Jewish people may never have been able to repent and move forward. During the Mena Mitzarim, for 21 days, we mourn the missing 21 letters. The 21 letters written on the Luchot, which were smashed on Shiva Asar Batamas. Interesting how it all comes together, right? Tisha B'Av, however, does not correspond to a letter, as it represents the potential for good, the Tet, which wasn't destroyed. Although on Tisha B'Av we sit as mourners, Tisha B'Av is described by Megillah Echa as a Moed, a potential festival. And therefore, after Chatzot at noon, we, always, we already sit on chairs and begin to focus on the Nechama, the consolation of the Tet, the good which will one day, we will one day celebrate on Tisha B'Av, and I hope we will celebrate that very soon before this Tisha B'Av. And here, remaining may we see, may we all live to see the uh, coming of Mashiach and rebuilding of our final and everlasting Beit HaMikdash. Amen, and thanks for watching.